share about MindUp right now, let's see, is what Goldie created with a group of neuroscientists, educators, contemplative practitioners, and positive psychologists. It took about three years to write the program. It took another six to get it researched in an RCT. It took another two to get it accredited by CASEL. And today we've recently hit our 500,000 kids served mark in seven countries and are trying to scale through one of the hardest systems in the country, our US education system. So <laughs> we have some great anecdotal things to share with you. So one of the things that makes Mind Up different is really its brain-centric approach. You're going to see a little bit more about our pillars in a sec, but one of the things that I think bookend our program is we believe that mindfulness is terrific. Mindfulness is one of our pillars, but we think it needs to be bookend by an understanding of our brain on the left and some positive psychology on the right for an outcome of social and emotional literacy. That's been a formula that's been very successful for us. Susan talked about sticky you know, things that the young kids, because our program serves from pre-K through 12, really can relate to and anchor to that helps with academic attainment, general well-being, behavioral you know, issues in the classroom and at home. So what, I don't need to tell any of you about the state of kids and teachers today, stress and schools. Kids are arriving to school with no capacity to quiet their mind. They don't have the coping mechanisms to be able to get quiet and engage in learning. So one of the things that we started doing and looking at the research around the country, and I think two of the most disturbing statistics that we kind of fuels us on an everyday basis and our mission is 50% of the kids lack hope for the future. Well, we can talk about motivation, we can talk about academic attainment, et cetera, et cetera, but if 50% lack hope for the future, I think that's a huge statement about what we're doing in our school system and how we can hopefully make it better. The other thing is nearly one in three kids are bullied, and that statistic is growing. And whether, as Susan, I think, very accurately pointed out, whether we're talking about the at-risk kids and kids that are experiencing ACEs, chronic stress, et cetera, or we're really talking about kids that come out of environments that don't have maybe an obvious stress or pressure, but are actually showing up in sometimes worse shape with overscheduled agendas, psychosomatic illness, um, and incredible levels of stress on the other end. These are programs that can scale equitably across all socioeconomic spectrums.